Hey guys, today we are going to look at the motivation behind Gerard, the completionist, not donating the money. It's not a simple mistake as he would make it seem. In my personal opinion, the idea or the notion to not donate money was started from the very beginning of the foundation. Only 10 years later was it found out, but that doesn't mean that that was the plan. The plan had to begin from zero, zero because at that point in time, he still wasn't donating money. Now, people who are defending him are absolutely ludicrous because let's say that the IRS, the government, that he's not guilty. Okay, he's totally innocent. There should be no repercussions. Then what you're telling every charity out there, what we're telling every YouTuber out there is they should start their own charity, raise a lot of money by lying, right? These are straight up lies because he mentioned specific organizations that he was donating money to would still have yet to receive a penny. Okay, he used the charity and he know he absolutely knows how to the charity runs because he has expenses. So he's able to do his expense report every year, but not able to distribute the money every year. And this continued on for 10 years. So it's 10 years of expenses without ever donating a cent. This is pretty awkward in my opinion because that means somebody was actually using the account. And it wasn't just a debt. I could understand if you know it was just an account and you didn't have any money coming in. Maybe there was a little bit of money left over that you forgot to donate and then 10 years later. But this was a very active account. Money was coming in from actually multiple different sources. Money was being taken as expenses for different uh, items, including in 2022, a golf tournament. So the golf tournament expenses were being taken out of the Open Hand Foundation from the money raised. That brings a lot of questions in, but if you think he's innocent and you think that there should be no repercussions for this type of behavior, then you would be encouraging other people to do so. And every charity, therefore, would have a great excuse of not of collecting money, collecting money, expensing money, expensing money, and never donating money. You could see how tragic this could be, right? You could see, you know, instead of one the completionists, you have, have thousands of them doing the very same thing. So you have people saying, I'm going to donate money to XYZ Foundation uh, to raise the money, right, to get people to donate. They raise the money. They're expensing their media production, the golf tournament, whatever they're expensing on the account, which is perfectly fine. What is not fine is that no money has been paid in 10 years. So this is not as they portray it. Oh, that he just forgot. Well, he certainly didn't forget to uh, take the expenses out, okay? The second idea that was betrayed, well, he just wanted to accumulate a lot of money. Well, that should, if that was ever true, that should be conveyed to people. So if in year five, if the plan was to accumulate $600,000 and you'd convey that, you're not going to get as many donations, right? People are obviously thinking you're donating their money in a timely manner. And this is my point. My point is it's not his money. It was never his money. He never put his own money in. And like I said, every year he has expenses. Every year. And that's okay. I mean, that's normal for a charity to do, right? Um, I used to date this girl. She worked at an insurance charity. I think Obamacare gave them $10 million a year. And everyone in that charity, from the intern to like her boss, got paid in the six figures. Her boss, I think, got paid in the seven figures for doing very little, just kind of making fake reviews and so on. And, you know, eventually I'm just like, okay, I can't date you anymore. <laughs> this is pretty bad. You know, I, I don't want to talk about charity anymore. But that was the reality of a lot of these charities is that they just get government funds or they get personality funds, they hire people. Um, I think Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter works for Gerard, and that's kind of a weird relationship, right? The charities are not what you think they are. They're, you know, giving money from one party to another party, and that party gives money to that other party in a different charity, right? These charities donate to each other all the time. It's just a, 
in my way, in my opinion, many charities, not all, are a way to avoid paying taxes. You know, and it's um, and that's bad for us as taxpayers when other companies can avoid taxes this way. So back to the charity and the reason why. Number one, he is guilty of committing, and I'm I I at least believe this is a civil. He's going to be fined, but it could be even criminal. Like you don't want if you want to make a case example. So the FBI is all about making examples of people so other people don't try it. If you don't make an example of Jared, what's you know what's every other charity going to do now? They're going to do exactly what Jared did. And when you come to them 10, 15, 20 years later and say, hey, well, we noticed that you didn't donate a single cent, but you were expensing a lot of this stuff and the money's somewhere, right? Hopefully. Well, the next time the Jared individual will not have the money. Because nine times out of ten, they probably don't have the resources to fill up the bank account. So, Jared, Gerard, Gerard, yes, Gerard, he is um, screwed. Because I cannot see a scenario where this is allowed to continue. I cannot see a scenario where he's not punished by the law. I can't see a scenario where they green light this. Like, simply put, if he is innocent and he's doesn't, he comes off clean and he's then every single charity and from here, and you know how, you know, I mean, there are good charities and there are bad charities, but every single charity, including people who are just creating new charities right now, is just going to withhold money. They're going to expense it and they're withhold money. And then hopefully somebody forgets about the charity in the future and then the money just goes in their bank account, if not already into their personal bank accounts charity fraud is not a you have to just like choosing to be a public figure gerard cho chose to be a public figure he chose to put his life his mom's life his dad's life on social media i didn't choose that for him he chose that for himself he wanted the fame he wanted the fortune unfortunately as any youtube content creator can tell you even a small youtube content creator like myself you get criticized. That's part of the game. If you want to go out there and you want to promote yourself and you want to promote your company and you want to promote your brand and you want subscribers and so on, you get, you get criticized. That's just the nature of the game that we play on YouTube. And as soon as you make a YouTube video, you understand the comments you have no control over, the dislike button you don't have any control over. You don't have control over these things of what you, what you say people may not like to hear. Even if you think it's real. So when you look at this, he also chose to make a charity for his dad mom. That was a choice he made. And when you make a choice, that's a responsibility. I actually had a um, interesting talk with somebody. So in my neighborhood, people abandon their dogs a lot. I live in one of the poorest places in Texas. According to FBI, it is rated the second most dangerous place in Texas to live. And uh, based on reported crime, and that's the FBI. So it's, it's, it's legit, right? I live in Humble, Texas. Humble spelled with an H. I pronounce it humble, but, you know, I pronounce a lot of things wrong. Because, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and people abandon their dogs a lot. And what I'm finding is a lot of these dogs have medical conditions. I foster dogs. I fostered 15 dogs in my since I've been here uh, starting in 2016. And what you learn is that people abandon dogs where they're no longer puppies. People abandon dogs when they get heartworm, which is very frequent here. It's a $300 treatment, depending on the size of the dog. People abandon dogs when they no longer they have kids. Often when they're childless, they have a dog. And as soon as they get the kid, the dog's on the street. When you choose to adopt a dog or buy a dog, you know, adoption's always best, um, all my pets are adopted, minus one pet, which is a special circumstance for my business, it is a responsibility, it is your, and it may not always be fun, it may not be fun to file taxes, it may not be fun to do research, it may not be fun to figure out what organizations to give to before stating that you're giving to them, 
it's not all fun and games when you start a charity. It's not all fun and games when you, you're making, a, in my personal opinion, you're making a commitment to that dog or that cat, right? That you're saying, you know what, even in old age, even in bad health, you know, you gave me so much joy when you were younger, I'm going to return it to you. I have an old dog and it's really like kind of crossing my mind a lot more frequently. He has hip issues, right? He's uh, 11 and a half and it's a responsibility. This charity is a responsibility. If you open a charity and you're dead mom and you gain fame from it, you gain subscribers, you gain Twitch followers or whatever they are, you gain social media. I mean, he's been covered by social media. People be posting about you and how generous and how nice of a person you are because of this charity. You're gaining stuff from that. Your return is to treat this charity as a real business, to know what's going on with the charity every single year. You certainly know how to take money from the charity as shown by your expenses that you take every single year. So somehow somebody's able to calculate that Right? So it's not like they don't know the charity exists, of course. right? They're, they're calculating how much money they can take from the charity, but they never calculate who to give the charity to. or never. That's your responsibility as a charity. And every year, it's not like, oh, we're just going to wait 10 years and give it to one person. Maybe every year you give it to a different organization that can do something good with it. Right? They pitch you and they say, hey, Gerard, this is our charity. We can do this this year. If you give us this money, we can help this many people. Great. Maybe next year there's a better pitch for you and you want to give that to that charity and you research. I could understand a situation where you miss one or two years because you're trying to research, you're trying to get a better feel for different companies that you might want to give money to, or different charities, different foundations. But I don't get 10 years. No one did any research. No one figured out any companies. No one even talked to these companies and it's like, hey guys, uh, I know we're using your name right now, but uh, here, what, what can you offer? What can you... It's it's astounding to me, right, that people will defend this behavior when it's it, it's indefensible. We're not talking about an organization that's two year, one year, two years, three years, four years. We're talking about an organization that's ten years, approaching ten years. Like, how did they not um, figure this out? Like, I I am I am absolutely just gobsmacked right like it's they figured out how to deduct money from the charity for their own expenses like golf tournaments right which is fine that is a real expense i'm just saying that you know in, in terms of like what type of people they are they're not the type of people that pay for their own golf tournament right i'm just trying to talk about the, the expenses and the fact that this is an active filing they are filing their taxes every year. It's not like somebody forgot. That's what he wants you to believe, that they just simply forgot. The explanation is a lot deeper, and we have to look into his relationship with his mom. I, I know people don't like the personal, but he put it out there. I didn't put that shit out there. I don't know anything about him. He put it out there. I just read it. Like, how can you... Then, I mean, if you don't want it out there, then don't publicly put it out there on a podcast. Right, you put it out there because you wanted people to feel bad for you. You you wanted the attention. You wanted the click. You wanted the subscribers. Be very careful, dude, because whatever you put out as a public figure, can you are open to criticism on that item, not just that day, not just that year, but many years later. That's my opinion on public figures. But back to my original concept. People who are defending him, saying he's innocent, have no idea. They got to look at the math. They raised all this money over 10 years. They, they had expenses over 10 years. They filed taxes over 10 years. And no one thought it was bad that the money was still sitting there until recently. Yeah. You cannot, as society, as a member of society... We cannot allow this to be precedent, right? So in case law, if um, Gerard is found innocent and he's not fined or he's not punished in a way that would prevent future people from doing this, then every single YouTuber will now have a charity and they're going to raise money. They're going to make claims that their money is going to St. Jude's and the money is really just sitting on a bank account, right? Hoping that people eventually forget it. Anyway, 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.